Hello, I am Andrew of Team Red Pressure, here to teach you how to properly use a needs metrics matrix. A needs metrics matrix is a tool which is effective at translating qualitative customer needs into quantitative product specifications and outlining the relations between the two. My teammates, Chris, John, and Tom, will teach you how to effectively relate needs and specs in a simple three-step process. They will explain how to ascertain customer needs. They will explain how to determine target specifications and metrics. And they will explain how to properly use the needs metrics matrix. The needs metrics matrix is set up with the customer needs on the left, the specs above, and then a matrix in the middle where you can mark where the customer needs and specs line up. Right now, Tom is writing the customer needs for a water bottle using the needs metrics matrix marker. These customer needs can be derived in various ways. They can be derived by using surveys, interviewing customers, using focus groups, or by observation. The customer needs are not all the same. Some needs will be more important than others. And you have to keep that in mind while you are writing your customer needs. The reason that this is important is that some of your specs may line up with multiple customer needs, which you cannot fill both. So you need to have a hierarchy of your customer needs. The next step in defining your needs metrics matrix is to set your target specifications. These are the metrics part of the needs metrics matrix. The first step in this process is to prepare the list of metrics. This needs to be a complete list of all the dependent variables associated with your, your product. And it needs to have the list of both practical and the popular criteria that you're going to use to evaluate your product. A good way to help define this is with benchmarking. The examining other products on the market issued by competitors to see what criteria your product will have to stand to in order to be successful. A good way to do this is to set ideal and marginal, marginal acceptable values. For example, for our mass of the water bottle, we have decided that it should be less than 500 grams to meet the, the benchmarking, and that's the marginally acceptable value for that uh, criteria. Afterward, we have to reflect on the process. Do we think that this is a, a good summary of the needs? What do you think, John? I think it's pretty decent. <laughs> Success. All right, now we've got our needs metrics matrix accomplished with the, our set of metrics. We can finally compare the metrics and the needs in the needs metrics matrix. The first step is to identify which, where the overlap is in your needs and your metrics. This is accomplished by drawing the X's. These help show the interrelationships between some of the variables to identify further problems in concept generation. For example, the mass specification in the needs metrics matrix relates to two of the different needs, both comfortable hold and like to carry for the water bottle. This is going to have to be something that is adjusted for during concept generation. Also, the hold liquid need has two different specifications that, accom that accommodate it, and that shows that this is going to be a more complicated variable in further development. Ideally, of course, your needs metrics matrix would only have one correlation between your needs and your metrics, but for more complicated products, this will not be acceptable. I hope you have learned a lot about how to properly use a needs metrics matrix from my teammates, John and Tom. They taught you how to properly consider the customer needs, how to properly consider the product specifications, and how to properly relate them inside the needs metrics matrix. Needs matrix, metrics, needs metrics, matrix, matrix, needs, metrics, matrix, 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 matrix,